I have to ask you this. Um, I really enjoyed your movie. Uh, I think it's very effective for what it goes to do. Even if you did something that was flawless, that the world embraced, there are still going to be people online that are just upset that sure. they're making another poltergeist. Yeah. When, how do you, do you sort of just realize when you take on a property like this, no matter what I do, there's going to be negative criticism and I sort of have to deal with it? Yeah. Or I'm, I'm just like, because... No, it's, a, it's, a really, it's a really interesting question. Obviously, I've had to grapple with the reality of making a poltergeist remake for the two years I've been working on this. And I was very, <coughs> I was very wary of, of getting into this movie as much as I, it ticks all my boxes, right? Like everything about a poltergeist film is what I want to be doing on a big screen. But the first film told that story perfectly. It told it just right. And so you're always going to, um, you're always going to be working um, uh, against or or uh, or side. Oh, just a few more minutes. I'm really enjoying this. Yeah, just a few more minutes. This is actually a, a good juicy question. Um, so, so the original tells the story perfectly, but the uh, but this film um, was going to get made. Sure. I mean, honestly, and I felt protective over it. I wanted to make sure that. A poltergeist film could be told that actually loved and respected what made the films of the 1980s tick, what made them work and, and have an engine and a soul. And I feel like modern audiences don't have human stories that take fantastical leaps that aren't superheroes anymore. Um, it's very rare to introduce fantasy or, or sort of genre elements into a grounded human setting because usually those films take a certain scale that is just not allowed of, of, um, of the studio film of 2015 anymore. And so I felt, I guess my answer is that I, I accept that there is an emotional connection to the original Poltergeist that is unshakable for many people who grew up with the film. Um, and if I wasn't the one making it, I would probably be feeling the exact same exact same thing um, as, as an audience member. But um, I also feel that that this movie has a, uh, a pulse of its own. I feel like it uh, it tells the story in a way that will relate to young audiences, modern audiences, and um, and they are the ones that I. Uh, I had in mind when I was making the film, I wanted them to feel that same sense of accessibility and, and relatability in the world this family lives in, so that when shit starts to get weird, um, they'll feel just as unhinged as we did when we when we watched the, the original films. Right See, I, I don't think Fox wants me to say this, but I'm, I'm going to say what I think. Uh, I think that the film is going to be very effective for kids. I think that younger audiences are really going to be scared watching it. I think that older audiences who have been growing up on like torture porn yeah. and really bloody situations are going to be like you know, there might be more of a difficulty reaching them because they've been so exposed or desensitized yeah. to that kind of thing. Well, obviously, I've had a secret agenda of terrifying kids you know, <laughs> exactly. throughout my career. Um, and, and it's because those were the most vital moments I had growing up as a movie lover. Those feelings of going into theater and feeling like I was losing control and like anything could happen to me, those were the moments where I felt the most alive as a kid. And, and that's what made me want to make movies. And so it's it's it, I feel like it's my it's my job to carry that that terror forward for for new audiences and you know it's um, it's 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 a great story the Poltergeist story is a great story and and, and I, this is not just like the you know production notes speak this is how I genuinely feel I think great stories deserve to be told often um, and uh, and I really hope that. Um, that just what you're saying that you know unsuspecting kids just make the cut into the theater and um, and, and and have the you know have the shit scared out of them. Oh, I, I definitely think and see here, I definitely think a group of five or six, 13, 14 year olds are going to go see this movie and be absolutely you know clown. They're not going to enjoy. You know they're going to be scared of clowns. They're going to be you know it's going to hit them. Mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. and especially because they haven't seen the original. So there is a lot of you know what I mean. For sure, absolutely. Um, and look, I, I think that's a I think that's a very uh, it's a very fair and honest reading of the um, of of the nature of a of a remake or reboot. Um, you're, th- we as audiences have emotional connections to the films that we grew up in. They're they're un you know they're unimpeachable, <laughs> and and so I think that being honest, what you have to do as a storyteller, as a as a director or whatever, is just just tell a good just tell a good story. Just um, you know be as um, be as um, as uh, as direct and as 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 sharp you know uh, include those audiences that loved the films that they grew up in but don't don't expect that in some way the film that you're putting in front of them is going to replace or or unseat the original because it's an impossible task it's not it's not why i made this film i made this film because I love Poltergeist, and I wanted to make a Poltergeist film, and I wanted to to be able to share that film with a whole lot of young people. Uh, no, hundred uh, percent. My last question for you: uh, Are you developing scripts? Are you writing? What, what's yeah. coming up for you next? I've been I've been writing a lot. That's kind of how I spent my time in the in the years between Monster House and City of Ember, and, and now Poltergeist. And so I, I've I've been working really hard to create genre worlds that um, are grounded and, and, and feel connected to the stuff that we loved, you know, growing up. It's really that feeling, if I can tap into it for the rest of my career, um, uh, however long that is, I'll be really psyched because, um, cause it, you know, we just don't get enough movies that push the... Uh, push the fear and the fantastical in the everyday, in the mundane. That's, sure. That's what I want to do. We also need more films like The Goonies. Hold that thought. No, nothing Goonies related, but I'm, I'm, I'm working on a, on a children in peril um, story that I'm really excited about. And, uh, you know, that's my, that's my, uh, that's my jam. Yeah, no, I mean, that's, that's, <laughs> I want more movie, like that's, that's a, you know, yeah. that's the, also, it's the highest movie going part of the audience. You know, it's like the kids go yeah. to the movies. They're the ones with time and yeah. money. It's, it's 100% true. And, uh, and, and also, they're the ones with the open minds and, and, the, and the sort of wide open imaginations. And uh, there's nothing, the reason we all do what we do is because of the experiences we had in theaters as, as kids. Uh, it's why it's why people are reading your site. It's why you're <laughs> holding this telephone and recording me, and it's why I'm sitting here. And it's that same it's that sure. same joy and energy and passion that we're we're finding ways to hold on to. But new audiences, you know, kids going into theaters are discovering every weekend, and that's amazing. Hundred percent. Does it have a title? Oh, not yet. All right. Yeah. yeah. Well, let me know. I will. Let me-